live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World 2019. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. And we are joined by Sanjeev Vora. He is the Group Technology Officer and Global Data Business Lead at Accenture. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me here. So, we're hearing so much about AI-led data intelligence and the other buzzword, of course, that we hear so much about is digital transformation. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this data-first approach to digital transformation. What, first of all, what does that mean? <laughs> so I think, uh, I think we are, what we are seeing is that if you, um, I think we, we do see that we are getting into a post-digital era, uh, which means that in the last seven years, uh, most bigger companies and businesses have invested in building a better customer engagement. So what they did was they created properties like portals, like mobile applications, you name it, like right? uh, to just get better sense and touch their customers better than they were touching earlier. Right, that was a whole investment that went into the last six, seven years. And <laughs> what they feel is that, uh, so what's next? Like you, know, you, you do that, but does it really translate into revenue growth? Is it really translating into the experience on a sustained basis, not one time? But on sustained basis, every time when you touch a customer, they feel the same passion towards you. They feel that you're, they're still engaged with you, and they want to come again to you for whatever you're offering, their services or goods. And they felt that that's not actually happening. And the reason why it's not happening is because I think the underlying data is not complete or comprehensive enough or not accurate enough for giving that experience. And that realization is seeping up right now. So they are asking for ensuring that instead of looking at a use case based approach of solving one problem for one, one business or one geography, is there a way to do it enterprise wide? And that's a ask which is coming up. So the point which is coming out is that they looked at technology process, you know, this old tradition model of looking at new, new businesses, technology, people, processes, and those three. But now they're looking at the fourth element which is foundational called data. So that's what we are calling a data first approach. So you have to look at data as well while looking at reforming your business services and offers to the client. And I, I want to touch on something you said earlier, and that is to make, to make the customer feel passionate about interacting with you. I mean, that's such, an, that's such a loaded and, and almost romantic word to describe a customer interacting with a company. Why, why, why is it that companies are trying to in, invoke passion and incite passion, inspire passion? I think it's a, it's, it's a way to differentiate yourself with your competition. So I think that's what, in my view, the businesses are doing, right? So let me give an example to you to make it real. Like, and, and it may address your first question as well to some extent. Like we are working with a, a cruise company, one of the largest cruise company, North America based. And they, uh, they obviously uh, are trying to make sure that the experience of the customer is much better than they had earlier. Uh, and which can result into a much higher revenue growth for them, obviously, and acquisition of more customers, right? The friends of friends, the friends of customers, if you may. And they had done a great job in creating that digital property and, and the transmission of the prog program. <coughs> but they also realized that when they are now, they realize that they really don't have a sense of who is the customer. Now that's a good question. Like after all this investment, you still don't know who's the customer. And that's why they came and talked about can I get a single view of my customer? And the, the reason why they don't have a single view of customer is because they actually don't own all the interface to the customer. They only own their own interface to the customer, but they also work with a lot of partners, as you can say, Expedia and others, who actually own that same customer. So they are not able to have a sense of that customer and their habits and their behavior in one single place so that they can really provide that recommendation saying, well, guess, if you're going to Italy, we can probably help you somewhere. So right. yes, exactly, that's what I want to, what's what I want to know is what, if you do have a sense of who your customer is, and that is everything from their demo, basic demographic information to what they do on Sunday afternoon with their families, what kinds of things then can the cruise company do to make that customer more passionate toward, toward the cruise? They can do a lot, but I can tell you another example of another cruise company, which is again a customer for us, and they did a fantastic job, and I'm assuming that you may have also experienced yourself, but uh, this customer, they had come with the, they had come with the single view of customer, obviously, but they, what they did was they used a lot of, a uh, lot of IoT or, or sensors in their ships. They actually transformed the entire ship. Like the entire ship has been transformed to understand the customer uh, movement and give that uh, flawless and seamless uh, touch point to customers, which can help to have them have a very great vacation on their, on their vessels, if you may. And that's what they did. They, from the day when you order the tickets on, for them, uh, 
you know, on, on for their service. From that time onwards, they actually they actually send you a medallion, and that tracks you as a person moving into the shift, and they can offer much more seamless seamless services, and also reduces the friction of their operational staff. The staff is not in a hurry and hassle. They're actually able to understand who's actually the customer, what they want, and able to provide that service. So that's how they're using that, uh, you know, that feature of knowing the customer to better serve them, bring a better engagement with them, plus also, also reducing the operational friction in their own staff. So the customer wins because they feel that the, that the company gets them and knows them and understands them, and the company wins because then they're able to make more money off that customer because they already have predicted what that customer wants and needs in every moment. And they can do more with less. They can do more with less staff, less resources. So one of the things that we also are talking a lot about here on theCUBE, it's the 10th anniversary of theCUBE, so we've had a lot of these conversations, is how data is becoming a C-suite discussion, and there's this growing need to appoint a chief data officer to drive data strategy. What do you, how, what do you see as the evol evolving role of the CDO at your company and then also at the companies that you work with? We see the, this is a very significant step uh, in the future. Uh, there are a lot of prediction from, let's say, Gartner and all, right, to our an analysts saying that there will be more and more roles, like three-fourths of the companies would have, large co three-fourths of large companies would have a CDO, a chief data officer. But I think our point is slightly, uh, you know, to augment that point, I think what we believe is that we do believe, uh, irrespective of who actually owns the agenda, whether it's chief data officer or a CI or a CO, they definitely need a person at the C-suite, not below C-suite to have that discussion, in the, and, uh, discussion at the table and ensure that their data strategy is attached to their business strategy. And that's not true in many cases right now. So the data is a topic which is two levels down in many, organi many of the organizations and that's why it is not getting that attention as a corporate asset, as a strategic asset in which, in which, from where you can actually extract value that you're looking at, right? And that's what we see. So it's, we see a very important role. We see a, a whosoever is in that role, we think, uh, we think there are a few qualities that person need to have. Right? The first one, the person has to have a seat on the table. The second is that person should be able to understand business quite well. Should be more innovative business innovation. She, he or she should have an insight on business innovation. And uh, if it, the person is having tech savvy, it's good to have. But it's not must to have. Right? And, uh, and we do believe that person should be able to pre prepare a strategy and the governance of data across his or her peers so they know that what value they are able to get from that data and how they can share data across their functions, and that's where the value comes in. Plus, beyond that, the last point would be the making sure that it's whatever they do, they do responsibly. So they actually make things work, whether you are using AI or whether you're using any machine learning or everything else they have. They make sure that it's a responsible data and make it secure for themselves, for their enterprise, and for their customer. Well, that is certainly a theme that we're hearing a lot about at Informatica World. Talk about the relationship between Accenture and Informatica. It's quite good. Um, it's it's been good for years. We have been working uh, together for years, but the last two years uh, or two and a half years, I think it has really uh, taken a different shape uh, between the two companies, and that's largely because we have really gone to a strategic discussion between the, both the companies and seeing what is the future. And I think one thing which uh, resonated very well with their leadership, uh, uh, you know, Anil himself as a CEO and uh, and Amit and Tracy uh, and everybody else, and with our leadership is that that we do believe that uh, we are at the surface of untapping the value, one. Second thing is, I don't think the use cases will draw the benefit which large organizations are looking at. It has to be something done at enterprise level. So think about, like, I think uh, Anil talked in the morning about enterprise uh, data catalog, Amit, Amit was talking about. It. You need that. You need that to not do one use case for one particular business, for one particular country, of one particular customer segment, we need to do that for entire businesses across the enterprise. And that can only happen if you have a sense of data and you know how to do it effectively at scale. And that's what I think that people are looking. Companies are going to be looking at that solution very soon and I think it's the right timing for uh, having that discussion. And there are going to be learnings that you can derive from financial services and apply to retail and healthcare and all sorts of, there, is, is that what you're finding here at Informatica World? Are you having those in conversations to learn the best practices? I mean. Oh yeah, I mean I think we have, uh, we have various customers here, uh, Accenture, as uh, we have our customers here who are presenting in different sessions. We had Shlumberger present today morning at 11 a.m. about how a master data management can actually help you drive a better uh, better uh, strategy on transforming your uh, operation systems like SAP. 
that was never talked earlier. Two years back, never, nobody talked about saying how can uh, MDM help you have a better transformation of your SAP systems. Well, that's where we are going. We are saying that, okay, you have a trans trans uh, transaction systems, but you also need a system of uh, right governance. Uh, because a lot of your data, customer data or other data, may be sitting in SAP or maybe sitting in Salesforce, how do you connect the dots? You need something to connect that dot so they have a single source of truth and make sure that you, you know your customer or vendor or your location or everything else in the right fashion. Know so. your customer. So another thing I want to ask you about is the skills gap. And I know that workforce of the future is something that you have worked passionately on at, passion, it keeps coming up a lot in this <laughs> conversation, um, at, at Accenture. Tell us, tell us your story first in, in terms of how you uh, came to terms with the skill gap and then what you did at Accenture to, to, to remedy so it. So this is a four years back and we were looking at our tech, tech strategy and our strategy to you know, rotate our business going forward or how, where do we invest? And we felt, and we are a people-centric company, so we are 470,000 people. It's a lot of people. And in my role, one of the, one of the things in my role is to make sure that I look at all the investment that we do on our people. As a CTO of our technology business, I need to make sure that we are investing in the right, right places. <clears throat> so this came to me saying that, okay, will we be relevant as 470,000 people 10 years from now? That's a question, right? Because of AI, because of machine learning, because of human plus machine, what happens to our workforce? So that's what I was trying to solve by stating saying, what do we do next, right? And that's what the whole point about workforce of the future, where we will work more closely with the machines and how will that happen? So what skills we will have need as, a business, as humans to work with the machines and everything else what's going to happen in terms of automation going forward? And plus new, new talent which is required for the future. And uh, so we worked hard uh, on this. Uh, we built a strategy around what we need. Uh, then we uh, did a very simple thing. We actually went to a, a sort of a high-speed execution in agile sprints. And uh, we, came with a, uh, we came with a few uh, principles, actually. I can say a couple of them to you so you, you can resonate. One is we, we came with the principle saying, um, there's already a lot available in the market. So don't spend creating stuff, but spend learning stuff. The second thing is we changed the mantra of our, our vision of our people vision, employee vision. It used to be saying that, um, it used to be um, that you need to um, perform and grow. Something like that. If you perform high in a company, you will grow faster. We changed the saying that learn and grow. So it says learning is more fundamental because performance will come automatically when you learn more. And what we did was we changed the, we, we worked very hard on the cultural aspect and one of the things which you used to always say is that if in the past, in 10 years back, if you used to learn a day in a month, well, that may not be enough today. Just because of breadth of technology and the change of technology which is happening much faster, it's 10x speed. So you need to learn at 10x level. That doesn't mean you need to be uh, learning at very deep level for 10 things. It's going to be hard for humans to do that. But you can use some help. But uh, that's why we rolled out two two-pronged approach. One is what we call as conversion training, which means we make you more aware of everything that's happening in the world, and then we give you chances how to go you deeper. How do do that? I mean, what, what is, how, I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a tall order. So <laughs> what I did was, uh, we, we, went, uh, we went to the market and I looked at a lot of platforms. Okay, you need technology to do everything. You get it, right? Uh, we are sitting here, when you're, we're talking, we're still talking in, uh, with use of right technologies, right? So, and making sure that our, what we're talking is available to a lot of people to watch us, right? Uh, but the same thing there, I mean, we were looking at a lot of platforms, uh, I looked at a lot of things and I felt everything was great, but it was a piece of engineering. It was not something which, um, which is experiential. So I had to build a platform of our own. So I spent six months writing a whole platform with a, with a very smart team, and the whole logic that I used was that build a platform which, is, uh, which treats employee or a human in the center of your development or design. So we made a very personalized or personalized platform uh, where uh, it helps the person to get there and it, is, uh, it attracts you to come back. So it's very, it's very, um, it's very user friendly or you know, user experiential platform. And we, did that, we call it Accenture Future Talent Platform. We deployed it across our entire businesses. Uh, we have 70% uh, of our people who are already being certified uh, through that platform and they feel good that they have got to the next stage of their career. And now we are actually uh, uh, using the same platform for our clients. So we are giving the platforms to our clients who can use that effectively. But from what I'm hearing from you, it's about 
having technology skills, know-how, and expertise, but then also having this mindset of learning and, and, and a hunger for learning and wanting to, to know more. How do you make sure that, you, that that culture is cultivated in the right way? So, so we did some of the campaigns. So the very simple principle that we use is that like you do a marketing campaign to attract a customer, whether you're selling a uh, beverage or you're selling a cruise uh, experience or vacation or whatever, we use a similar principles for our own employers. And we said it's learning campaigns. So the marketing campaigns, learning campaigns. So the one of the th campaign that we ran was, how important is you, for you to be learning fit? So just like we all measure ourselves on health every day, we said you have to measure yourself on learning. So we made it, our app actually was given to everybody so you can see that whether you're learning enough or not. And that bred the culture of seeing how am I doing against my own goals, but how am I going against Rebecca's goal? And that's what created gamifying a... Gamifying yeah, gamify it, making it more fun, like, a, little co a little competition. Plus, our, our, uh, we also did top-down effort as well, because we felt that people look at their role models and say, well, this person is very successful, I want to be like that person. Uh, that's a normal human, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know that's what people, uh, people see. So we, we made sure that our leaders do what they're saying and they can percolate down that, you know, they, they should start learning faster itself, like from top management perspective, so that people see them learning, they will say, well, this, this, you know, I want to be like him, so that means I need to have the same behavior as this person is in admitting. No, those are, those are critical people in, in companies. Well, Sanjeev, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been a pleasure having you. Same here, it was nice talking to you. I'm Rebecca Knight, you are watching theCUBE, Informatica World 2019.